Right, a very good day everybody. Today I'm going to fit a modern PL259 to some um, Ultraflex 7. Okay, so Ultraflex 7 is by a company called Messi and Poloni. They do some really nice custom connectors because the, the old days of the really crappy PL259s are over, ladies and gentlemen. You never have to deal with these again unless you want to become very annoyed with yourself. I remember James M0YM fitting something like 88 of these to a whole set of uh, multi two stub filters we built. And uh, he wasn't a happy bunny. So, what's the difference? So, the um, air cell, Messi and Poloni, and by the way, SSB Electronics do a similar do a similar system. Well, obviously you've got the body of the uh, PL two five nine. It comes with this, effectively a rubber grommet, which once it's installed, screws down and makes the back of the connector completely waterproof. The threads aren't waterproof. We're still gonna have to deal with the threads and I normally use a bit of Vaseline there. So that's what the system looks like. We've got, yeah, some people call these a four millimeter shielded banana plug. Well, frankly, I mean, I, I prefer that. Right? And an HF works absolutely fine. You know it's made contact. There's plenty of surface area. Sure, for UHF microwave, stuff like that. N types, which look on the surface quite similar, but I've just got a different pin. There we are. Ah. Okay, but that's a that's a that's a double-ended female. I'll put it to the other camera just to, just in case you can see it. If not, look on the internet for an N-type connector. So on the one hand, we've got a PL two five nine, and that connects to an SO two three nine. There we are. So you've got the socket and the plug. All right, so what I'm going to do is Messi and Polonia a couple of years ago sent me these scissors to cut their coax. I'll find the coax, which is on the floor. And we'll start assembling it. So we start off with the back of the, of the plug, which has also got a rubber grommet here as well. Uh, then we've got the metal washer so that when we start screwing this in, it uh, doesn't actually screw the grommet down so we'll put that down out the way that's fine there and then i'm going to cleanly cut this in half i happen to know these scissors do a really better job than my buckle cutters now messi and poloni say that you can cut but be very careful because you can cut all the shield off. Now we need one centimetre. So I'm going to get a razor blade and make a little notch. So I know that that's 10 centimetres. I'm now going to cheat and put several hundred pairs of glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. So these scissors are actually quite sharp so I'm being fairly careful in my cutting procedure. There we go. I'm just peeling back the braid and then in the book of words, they say you can open this up a tiny bit if you feel it could do with a bit more of a gap to get in here. So I'm going to push it in, see what happens. I might get lucky. Ideally, I'm trying to find... Oh, we're in. So this is making the connection between the braid and the shield. Lovely. I'm just going to trim some of the excess i'm not actually over fussy because what i'll do in a minute i'm just going to wrap that around and push that on properly 
and they'll stay out of the way I would have thought forever we'll push all this one back up and jam it all together lovely now I'm going to get my razor blade which we put down somewhere oh it's over there and I make a nice neat cut all the way down to the center of the coax let me get this copper braid off now to be honest this is I'm not a professional um, electronics engineer I don't do a lot of soldering I don't do much when it comes to soldering and that sort of thing but we do have to put this on I know and this eventually is going to fit in here and we solder that on now my problem is getting solder there's a tiny little hole here I don't know if you can see that tiny little hole so I like to tin the center of the connector first I don't think we're supposed to do that I don't know and I'll tell you why because as soon as I start tinning this stuff the diameter gets bigger as you'll see and then I can't get it inside the pin so I'll try and just tin the back of this just getting some heat in it My temperature is at 470, which is actually probably too high. Anyway, it didn't go all the way in, but I didn't want to put too much heat. Okay, <laughs> I've done it. So I'll get my solder ready. And, uh, if we can get lucky doing this out in the field is a lot harder you got the wind and you drop things and whoa I would have thought we're on I do want to do <sighs> inexperience this is going to be dead hot now isn't it I should really use my long nose pliers but anyway okay I've got it back on Woohoo. so I'm going to cheat this time I'm going to put it on the bench then I'm going to heat it up and that's the way I found it works best for me there we are I know I'm in now stop blow We're a bit of an angle which we can fix do you know what could move it's no good is it and I've now lost I've lost the hole I don't know where the hole is actually stuck on and I'm going to put the main body on now I've 
Got another problem here is that I don't have, I think it's a 16 mil uh, spanner that we need and I don't have, why is it not going on? Should just go on, I'm sure it will, it's just me. Okay, it's going on now. I can't remember if the, what the dimensions are of the slot here and the spanner size there. We will, I seem to remember it was 16 millimeters and I didn't have a 16 mil spanner. So, I mean, that is nearly on. That grommet there is nearly, nearly on. It just needs one more turn. Now this is when you're gonna laugh. So I've gotten a little adjustable there on the back of the socket. This is the funny bit. Yes. Hold tightly. I've been doing this for years. Because I just have never had a <sighs> trying to use an adjustable spanner with your wrong hand. That's it. Do you know what? It's actually that's probably enough. Probably enough, but we'll do a tiny bit more, quarter of a turn, if that. There we go, that's all I want. Because we're squashing out this bit here. So that thread is waterproof. Back into the, the coax we know is waterproof. The only thing that's not totally waterproof are these threads. Now, I have been using Vaseline on my threads for years. I'll test in a minute, but let me do a time lapse and I'll put the other end on. So why am I making these anyway? Because on the 13th of August, 2022, there's a bunch of us going out um, on a kind of a DX fest, all right? And we'll have, we need uh, some coax for a two meter antenna. And I've worked out the losses. There's, we're gonna have about three dB loss with this length on 70 centimeters and about meter and a half, uh, one and a half dB on the two meter band. We need one for 80 meters. Uh, probably an inverted L and then we're running a DX Commander Expedition and I already made that one well I already made that one here my holiday coax I'll take as a reserve I call it holiday coax because that is air cell 7 and funnily enough on 2 and 70 uh, slightly more loss actually than the Messi and Poloni um, Ultraflex I can never remember <laughs> Ultraflex the Ultraflex, so that's, we're using seven mil, which is just over a quarter of an inch uh, for VHF. And this is the VHF one, because I've got to go 10 meters up the tower. We're taking a hydraulic tower with us. And then uh, that means we can have the tent up to 15 meters away. So you can see that PL259s have moved on from the old days. The old days of having this, having this two part thing where we need to, Oh, I don't know. No, and there was always a debate on how to fit these. There's no debate about how that goes on. You can see it's pretty secure. My only issue, and if you've got a comment you can make, should I be using a finer solder? solder? Should I be tinning the center conductor before it goes on? So I'm a little bit lost there. If you can help me out, that would be marvelous. I'll coil this up. Thanks for tuning in anyway. Next video I'll put here and have a jolly good day. All right, bye for now. Thanks a lot, bye bye.